Today I'm going to be showing you the top 25 settings you need to change on your Samsung Galaxy S24. Now some are going to be security related, others save battery life or improve performance and some even unlock new features. However, all of these are going to be impactful changes that are going to make your experience using your Galaxy phone even better. So first I want to show you how to turn on battery protection as this is going to help extend your battery health. So to do this we're going to jump into settings and then we're going to scroll all the way down here to where we find device care right there and then we're going to tap onto battery. And then in here, we're going to make sure that battery protection is turned on. From there, we can also tap onto this menu to then choose what kind of battery protection we want. Now we have three here to choose from. We can choose from basic, adaptive, or maximum. Now, personally, I suggest you stick to adaptive as basically what that's going to do is it's going to learn your charging habits and then charge your battery more slowly. So let's say in the evening, uh, if say you plug in your phone at 10 p.m., it's first going to charge from zero up to 80 percent and then wait with the remaining 20 percent till when you typically unplug your phone, let's say 6 or 7 a.m. the next morning. This means it's going to charge slower, produce less heat and thus produce less wear uh, on your battery. So I think adaptive here is going to be the best of both as it still gives you the full battery capacity as opposed to having something like maximum where it won't charge beyond 80% uh, or things like basic where it's just going to help trickle the battery between 100 and 95%. So I think adaptive here gives you the best of both where it gives you some battery protection uh, and minimizes the wear on the battery while still giving you full access to your battery's capacity. Did you know it is important to restart your phone every once in a while as not doing so uh, can make your phone run slower than it should and it can also make certain apps or settings or functions not run the way they should. So of course restarting your phone is going to be a little bit uh, inconvenient, right? You never want to restart your phone. However, there is actually a setting that's going to automatically restart your phone every once in a while or basically when needed. So let me show you how to set this up. First of all, in settings, we're going to go back to the same device care menu where we were before and then we are going to scroll down here to where we find auto optimization, tap onto that, and then we're gonna turn on auto restart. So we'll tap onto this menu here, and then we can choose to either restart when needed or on a fixed schedule. And I think a schedule is a little bit overkill, so I think restarting when needed is great. Uh, what's also great is it does is typically uh, at night when your phone is charging, or basically when you're not using your phone to not disrupt you. Basically, if your phone ever needs to restart, it's going to do it on its own. You don't have to think about it yourself, and it's always gonna ensure that your Galaxy is running as fast and as optimized as it should. And now I want to show you one handed mode. Now, as you can see, this is a super useful way to quickly be able to reach the other end of the display uh, or say the top end of the screen without having to use your second hand. So even on the smaller S24 phone, I still find myself using this all the time. Super useful. And you can see with one gesture here, we can minimize the screen to you can see around 50% of the space, uh, making it much smaller and more reachable. You can also reposition it. So you want it on the left or right side. I'm left handed, so I prefer it on the left side. Uh, we can then also move it up or down to reposition. I don't know why you move it up higher. Uh, I prefer personally to have it down here at the bottom so that's easier to reach with your finger. Uh, and then to end or to exit out of one-handed mode, simply repeat the same gesture. Now this may have worked for you, it may not have, as you may have to activate this feature in the settings. So let me show you how to do this. What we are going to do, go back into settings here, and then we're going to scroll to where we find advanced features. That's the yellow icon here. And in this menu, we're going to activate one-handed mode to so make sure that that is toggled on. And as you can see, we can now enable one-handed mode from any application and again to exit it using that same gesture. Next, I want to show you how to turn on auto wake. Now, this is a super useful feature where if, say, your phone is off and on a table, as soon as you pick up your phone, your screen is automatically going to turn on so you can see either the time or your notifications uh, or more quickly unlock. So let me go ahead and show you where to turn this on. What we're going to do is go into settings and then we're going to go back into advanced features, the yellow icon. And then we are going to scroll to where we find motion and gestures. And there it is. And then here you want to turn on lift to wake. Now again, if your screen is off, what you can do is simply lift the phone. It's gonna detect that it's been lifted. You can see it automatically turns on to quickly unlock or to preview your screen. Now, one thing I will say, uh, if you are very serious about saving battery on your phone, this is something that I would recommend you turn off as it will take a little bit of battery, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, so that is something to bear in mind. Personally though, I think it's worth it because I really like having this feature on. And while we're here in the motion and gestures uh, setting here, one extra bonus setting that I suggest you turn on, both of them rather, is to double tap to turn on or off your screen. So let's say your phone is on the table, you wanna just quickly double tap and then double tap again to turn off. Again, a small but useful feature uh, that I really like to have on, on my Galaxy. So really, I suggest turning on all three of these settings in this menu. 
And now let's take a look at the side button. As you can see, you can actually customize this to a different function. So uh, I've set mine here to trigger the torch and we can also change this in the settings. So let me show you where and how to do that. I've kind of blinded myself here. Uh, so what you want to do is we're gonna go into settings here and then up on the top right, we're going to search for the side button. That's gonna be in your advanced features tab here. There we go. Then here we have the option to turn on whether we want a double press to do anything. So uh, by default, I believe that's going to launch the camera. We can also then tap here on this little settings button here to change this to basically launch uh, any application or even other system functions that you may want. So personally, I have set that to the torch. And then we also have the option here to choose what a press and hold is going to do to, for example, show up your power menu uh, to quickly turn off your phone. Uh, or if you use Bixby, you can, of course, trigger Bixby this way as well. And I want to take a look at split screen multitasking on your Galaxy S24. This is one of my favorite features uh, of Galaxy phones. I think they do this really, really well. And I use this all the time. As you can see, this sometimes can work really well with your standard applications. However, it doesn't always work for all third party apps as some applications will not be supported. However, there is a setting to enable, which will allow you to run all applications in split screen and multitasking mode. So to activate this, we're going to go back into settings and then we're going to scroll down to where we find advanced features. Then we're gonna tap onto labs. And then in here, we can turn on multi-window for all apps. And this is gonna require or rather allow all applications, including third-party uh, games, for example, or any app that you've downloaded to run in that split screen mode. Now, while we're here uh, in split screen, I wanna show you a couple of cool tips and tricks as well. So uh, first of all, what you can do is tap this little three dot menu in the center and then tap on the two arrows to quickly uh, swap or rotate your applications if you want to swap them around. You can also tap and hold on that three dot menu to move or rather rearrange the screen space. So if I want to give more screen space to my Chrome window uh, and less to YouTube here, I can do that and vice versa. Now, let's say there's a set of applications that you frequently use in this split screen mode and you want to save that. Well, there is actually an ability to save an app pair to your home screen. So what you can do is tap on this three dot menu. Then we're gonna tap on the little star here and then we can do add pair, add pair app pair rather uh, to the home screen. So if we go ahead and tap that, then we're gonna swipe home here. As you can see, we now have a new icon on the home screen that's gonna basically combine YouTube and Chrome. And every time I tap on that, it's then gonna open up a split screen instance of both applications, super useful. Speaking of super useful, uh, let's say you're filling out an online form or say you are booking a flight uh, and you need to close the application, pull up a different application to pull up some detail. Then you go back to your Chrome window uh, and you found that in the background, this has refreshed and now you've lost all of your progress and you need to enter all those text fields again. This has happened to me several times before. I'm sure it's happened to you too, but there is a way to avoid this from happening and that is to keep an app always open. You can actually pin an application to make sure it doesn't refresh. So to do this, we're gonna have the application open, then open up the app switcher like so. Then we'll tap on the application icon here, and then we can tap on to keep open. Now this application is never going to refresh, no matter what I'm doing on my phone. As you can see, it's signified here by this little lock that we have on the screen. Uh, but if I'm say closing this app, I'm gonna go into another application uh, and then go into another again. But as you can see, this application is always going to stay open exactly where it is to make sure that you don't lose the progress on that specific page. Now to exit out of this mode here what you can do is tap on the lock and now the app will be able to close uh, or refresh if it needs to but again particularly for online forms this here is super handy Perhaps even more handy uh, is if say you hand your phone over to a friend and you want them to look at a specific application, uh, let's say a picture here in my photos, but you don't want them to be able to go home and go through, I don't know, your messages or other applications that you may have on your phone. Well, there is a way to actually lock an application on your Galaxy device. Now, first you do have to enable this feature in the settings. So what we're going to do is go into settings and then over on the main page of settings here, we're going to scroll down to where we find security and privacy right there. We'll tap into that here. And then we're going to scroll down here to where we find more security settings. And then in here, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and turn on pin app. You wanna make sure that that feature is turned on and this will then give us the ability to lock any application. So uh, let's say the photos app here where we were previously, there we go. And uh, let's say I want to hand someone my phone and I don't want them to be able to exit this app. Just look at this app only. You wanna open up the app switcher 
tap on the app icon in the top of the application, and then we're going to tap on to pin this app. And as you can see, the app is now pinned, so I can uh, use this application like normal. However, I can't swipe home, I can't look at my system toggles, I can't even see my notifications. So really useful to know that if you hand off your phone, uh, the rest of your content or data or whatever you have uh, is safe. Now, to unpin an application, you want to swipe home and then hold up like so. As you can see, you will then be prompted to enter either uh, your pin or use your fingerprint like so. And as you can see, the app is now unpinned and I can swipe home like normal. A setting I consider essential is you want to turn on offline finding for if ever you lose your phone and your phone loses connection. So to do this, we are going to go into settings here and then we are going to scroll to where we find security and privacy. And then in here we have lost device protection. And then here you want to turn on offline finding. Now, Basically, this means that if your phone is ever lost, it's going to help use other Galaxy phones around you to try help locate it, even if your phone is offline and doesn't have Wi-Fi or cell service. And to take this one step further, we can also tap into this offline finding menu and have the option to encrypt your offline location. And this is going to protect your location behind a pin to keep it private only to you. Next, I want to show you how to get more application space on your home screen, basically get the most out of the screen space here. What you want to do is do an outward pinch over on your home screen. And then here we're going to tap onto settings. And then in here, we can change the app screen grid as well as the folder grid and the home screen grid size. So you can see here, this is what the different sizes looks like. So you can see uh, I can have it be larger, which gives me a lot more applications room. Uh, I can have a five by six grid. Of course, I can also go four by five, uh, four by six. And as you can see, you have a lot to choose from here to really get the most out of your screen space if you like. And this here is a very useful privacy setting in which you can get more private notifications to basically hide the notification content when it comes into your phone until it's either unlocked uh, or you've entered your pin. So to do this, we're going to go into settings and then we're going to tap onto notifications and then we're going to click, uh, click onto lock screen notifications. And then here you want to make sure that you have hide content shown as of course, if you were to show the content, it will not only show that you have a message, but also show you the content of the message. Or if I show hide, uh, right, tap on hide content, it will show that I have a message, but it won't show the content until I unlock my phone. Great for privacy. All right, now this next one is going to be a little bit controversial, and that is to change your navigation bar. Now, I know some people absolutely love those uh, Android back and, and home buttons, but I can guarantee you that swiping over to the navigation bar, or rather changing to the navigation bar, is going to be the better way to do this. And check this out. One of my favorite features of doing so is you have the ability to quickly switch between your open applications. I also like that it doesn't take up any screen space, right? It's just a subtle bar here at the bottom. So I really encourage you uh, to change this to the navigation bar and to do this. We're going to go into settings then tap on display and then we're going to scroll to where we find navigation bar and then here you want to go from the default uh, buttons here which is sort of the more classic uh, android layout to the swipe gestures again it just adds this really cool functionality it's so much smoother and i think is a much better experience overall if you have a lot of applications installed on your Galaxy phone, your app drawer may get uh, a little bit messy. As you can see with pages and pages of apps, you can actually change or choose to sort your applications alphabetically, making it much quicker or easier rather to find your apps. What you can do here on the top right is tap on that three dot menu. We're going to tap onto sort here and then we'll do alphabetical order. And as you can see, this is now going to make it much easier to find an application. And this brings us to the always on display. Let me show you how to activate and also customize this in the settings. So what we're going to do is tap onto the main page here of settings, and then we're going to scroll down to where we find lock screen and AOD that's always on display. And then here we're going to make sure to activate the always on display like so. And we can also tap into this menu and customize this quite extensively. And there's a few settings that I really recommend you change. First of all, uh, you have the ability to turn on or off whether you want your wallpaper to show as well as your uh, music information. Personally, I like to keep both of these off or rather the wallpaper off, but I like the notification uh, for the music information to show. And then we also have here the option very crucially to decide when you want that always on display to show. So you can either have it always show so your phone as you can see is always going to have that always on display showing here you can also however set it to tap to show so we'll only show when you tap the phone and you can have it set to a schedule and this is what i prefer to use where uh, i want my always on display to be active during the day however not in the evening or at night as it may be distracting when my phone is on my nightstand uh, or say when it's darker and i don't need to see my phone constantly so i suggest you set it to a schedule for example 7 a.m to 12 i think that's quite reasonable now I want to show you how to improve the sound quality on your Galaxy S24. So in settings, we are going to scroll down to where we find sounds and vibration. 
And then if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we have sound quality and effects, and you want to make sure that Dolby Atmos is turned on. Now, Dolby Atmos basically improves the sound quality that you're going to get out of your phone, particularly when you're using headphones or speakers. Uh, it's just a broader frequency, and it's also tuned differently uh, to really get you more detail out of your sound. So I definitely recommend you turn on Dolby Atmos. I don't really understand why it's not on by default. I think it should be. Uh, and then beneath that, we also have the option here. If you want to create a custom EQ, you can even choose from some profiles. If say you want all of your sounds, uh, all of your songs rather, to have a slight bass boost to them, uh, you can turn that on as well and you can keep it on balance, which is the default. And now let's talk about optimizing the system toggles. So that's this menu up here, a menu you probably use all the time, many, many times per day. So it is worth optimizing it uh, and getting it exactly the way you want. So to customize this, we're gonna swipe down and then uh, swipe down once more. And then we're gonna tap on this little pencil icon. And then from here, we have the option either uh, to switch between editing the full layout or just the top row. Now, of course, the top row here is gonna be the most important, so let's start there. So uh, to remove a toggle, you simply want to tap on the little minus button here, and then here we have all the available buttons, uh, rather, that we can choose from. You can see it's got a couple pages here to cycle through. So uh, let me see, the ones I like to have are definitely the connectivity ones, the torch, is also useful. Uh, another one I really like is power sharing. That enables you to uh, charge, for example, your AirPods or Galaxy Buds with your Galaxy device. That's one I really like. And you can also tap and hold here to rearrange uh, if I like and bring them uh, closer to uh, that I want as well. But of course, these top six here are going to be most easily accessible. So uh, keep the ones that you like most in the top row. And then we can also customize the full uh, system toggles menu here. We can have multiple pages. And again, ones that I suggest you add are going to be the extra dim mode. That's great at night. Uh, other things are the power share. Power share we already added. Um, let's see what else is there. Mobile hotspot, that's one I find myself using quite often, so I keep that relatively high up here. Then we can go ahead and tap on done here to save these settings. Uh, and if you don't have this on, I believe it is now on more recent versions of Android, but on the off chance that it is not, you also have the option here whether to always show or not show your brightness control. So I always like to have this showing. This means that with one single swipe, you can see your brightness control without having to first swipe down once more to access it. So with one swipe, you can change your brightness. And again, you can see that we just added that PowerShare uh, toggle there that's now saved to the top as well. And now we're back to an important security setting, and that is called invisible password. So this basically makes it so that you don't briefly see your password when typing it. You know how every character you type, you'll briefly see it. That's a feature that I prefer to turn off. That way anyone, say, looking over your shoulder uh, can't see what it is you are typing. So to do this, we are going to go into settings, and then we're going to go into security and privacy. And then in here, we're going to scroll down once again to where we find more security settings. And here you want to turn off make passwords visible. So again, these passwords are now gonna be invisible whenever you're typing them, it won't show you the characters. And this next one here is super useful and that is to give your phone a name. Now, if you're ever looking for your phone, say on a list of Bluetooth devices or uh, networks to connect to, it's just really useful to have your name or at least a recognizable name on your phone so that you know it's your S24 and not just any uh, other S24. So to do this in settings, we're going to scroll all the way down to where we find about phone. Then we can tap on rename and here we can now name the phone to whatever we like. You don't have to use your name, but use something that at least you know is unique to your phone. And this brings us to virus and malware protection. Now, this is a key feature that's basically automatically going to scan your phone every once in a while for any uh, viruses or malware that you may have. And this is built in on the Galaxy S24 and something I highly recommend you activate. So to do this in settings, we are going to scroll to where we find device care all the way here towards the bottom. And then we're going to scroll down once more to where we find app protection. And here you want to make sure that this is turned on. And this is then automatically going to scan your phone every once in a while periodically for viruses or malware. And if say uh, you've downloaded something suspicious or your phone is acting a bit off, you can always do a manual scan here by simply tapping on scan phone. This takes a couple minutes and this is going to check your phone and make sure you have no malware or viruses on your phone. And if it does detect any, it's going to show you and automatically give you the option to remove it from there. So anyway, guys, there you have it. Those are the top 25 settings that you need to change on your new Galaxy S24 to get the most out of this phone. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you check out my Galaxy S24 first things to do video, which I will also leave linked on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and take care.